Hi, this is Angelique from BrightSpark Media, and today I want to talk about how to set up an RSS feed for your WordPress website or blog using FeedBurner. Now, your first question might be, what is an RSS feed? You've probably seen it in lots of places on different blogs or websites that you're interested in, and it's just the little orange button, and I'll show it to you in just a second on here. This little button right up here that's the RSS button and the definition is it's really simple syndication and it's um, a standardized system for distributing content like news and blog posts into one format so what you want to do is make sure that you've got an RSS feed on your website quite often it's at the very top or on the right hand side or at the bottom so this is it on the home page of my website and I'll just show you what it does when you click that button it allows you to add this to your reader so it makes it easier for people to subscribe to your posts and keep up with everything that you're updating so when you're sharing new information uh, visitors and potential clients will actually be able to save everything in one place and follow your blog as it updates and get notified when there's new notifications so this is how this is on iGoogle and that's what I use so right here it just added this blog and it shows you the last three posts that I made so in a different video or in a different tutorial I'll show you how to set up iGoogle and different things like that but for now we're just gonna concentrate on actually adding the RSS feed properly to your WordPress website because what quite often happens is if you're using Google Chrome you'll notice that sometimes it just doesn't work and instead of adding your uh, the blog or website that you're interested in you'll just get a bunch of gibberish and I'll just show you what that looks like when it's gone wrong so this is the social media examiner website and let's say that I really like to follow their information, which I do because I've got fantastic tips and tutorials and different interviews with social media people in the industry. So I'd like to keep up to date whenever they uh, update their blog. And I would just click on the RSS feed button right up here. Like I said, it's usually right at the top or right at the bottom. And you'll notice you just get a screen full of gibberish. So that's because their feed is not set up to be working on Google Chrome. So if you think that there's only three different uh, web browsers that most people use, Chrome, Firefox, and Explorer, and it doesn't work on one of those, then you're potentially losing a third of the customers that come to your site and they're interested enough in what you're saying in your blog that they want to keep up to date on it and you're not letting them. So you want to make sure that your RSS feed works on Google Chrome which is why you actually want to make sure that you use it in something like FeedBurner because that seems to be one that works on every platform. So today I'm going to show you how to go through that and set it up for your WordPress website. So the first thing you're going to want to do is find out what your RSS feed actually is. So if you go to your WordPress website and log in you want to go in as your admin and go into the back and look at the dashboard and you'll be able to find it back there so I'm just gonna do it an easy way that you might do it this way too and just type in how do I find my WordPress URL so you see it's already popped up how do I find my WordPress RSS feed URL and probably any of these will work but I'm going down to this one codex.wordpress.org that's their information site and if you scroll down it actually gives you some examples and it says that any of them will do 
So right here, these are the different RSS feeds that you would have for your WordPress website. So it would be, for mine, it would be http colon forward slash forward slash brightsparkmedia.ca forward slash feed. So the next thing you'll need to do is actually set up um, a feed burner account and download the plugin so that you can add it to your WordPress website. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in feedburner.com. And I'm not sure if you know this, but FeedBurner is owned by Google. So if you have a Gmail account, then you can just log in from that. Otherwise, you'll need to create a Gmail or a Google account. And I'd really recommend this anyway, because there's so many Google products that are really useful for business. Now, I've gone through that in a different tutorial, and you can look through it, and I'll leave you the link at the bottom of the description. But um, things like Gmail, uh, Google Analytics, which you'll need for your website anyway. YouTube is actually owned by Google now. So anyway, there's lots of really good reasons to sign up and have a Google account. And of course, now there's also Google Plus. So I'm just going to sign in. And as you can see, it's just taking me right up to my feeds. So right now you can sign in, burn a feed right this instant. And this is where I would type in my website's feed, the URL that you've just looked up. So I'm actually doing this on someone else's account to set it up for them. And then you click on next. Okay, so it says, welcome, let's burn you a feed. So it's actually come up with a title with the title that it's found on your website. And then you can just click on to next. And look at that, it's already live. So this was a really easy process to just set up the feed for your RSS feed. So that's only one step of the process. And once you've set it up, then you can keep going through the process and it asks you how you want to set things up and you can customize it a little bit more. And I just leave it on the default and that's it. So your design your change consulting for this website is already set up and ready to go. So you get this analytics section where you can see how many people are coming through your website but for me, I just want to know the name of the feed that I've got. So if you just go back to your publicize tab, and it will give you the, the feed actually, just a minute, it's not in publicize. And if you go up here to edit feed details, then you can see right here, this is the address of your feed. So you'll wanna keep this screen open or write this down somewhere because that's what you're going to be using in your WordPress widget. So we'll just move on over. And now we're going to set up the actual widget on WordPress. So I'm going to go back to WordPress website. Now all, the dashboard for your WordPress is going to look different for all sorts of different platforms. So you'll just have to find how to set it up yourself. Um, there will obviously be instructions with WordPress or whatever a web designer has set it up for you. So if you don't have access to your WordPress website, then uh, just let your web designer or web developer know that you'd like to add an RSS feed and you want it to be feed burner. That's really important. So I've already got, sorry about that. This just keeps popping up. Um, I've already got social media icons set up on this website. So I'm just going to go to, actually, I'll just show you what they look like. So the plugins that I'm using, 
It's called Social Profiles Widget, and you can get it at studiopress.com forward slash plugins forward slash social dash profiles dash widget. And I'll give you that link at the bottom um, in the description. And it's a really easy widget to install on your WordPress. That's why I've used it. So the first thing you would have had to do is download that widget, uh, install it as a plugin, and then activate it. And then once you've got it, it shows up under your widgets. And then you can just drag and drop it wherever you want. So I've got it on this one installed in the sidebar. So it says social profiles right there. And you can see all the different icons for different social media. And this is where you're going to need to add that feed burner feed URL that we just created. So just go back to feed burner. And I'm just going to copy this whole line and go back to my website, add it in here. And that's it. So make sure that you save it. And then we can close it. So when we go and look at the website now, Oops, there's one more thing that I have to do. Sorry, I need to actually activate that RSS button. Let's see if it is on there. I believe I do need to do something else first. Yeah, we'll need to add that button now. So I'll just set that up and then I'll show you where to click on and that it's actually working. So here we are on the website and I know that on some of these pages it's on the right hand side. So there it is, it's automatically installed it and I can click on that. Right, sorry folks, I've just taken the wrong feed and this is what would have happened if you just used the, um, the WordPress widget that comes by default with the website. So I'm just going back to feed burner and I've just picked up the wrong feed. This is the one that you want here that says feedburner.com and that's the one that you need to copy and paste into the background of your widget. So I'm just going to do that one more time with you. Go into widgets. Go into the social profiles widget and just change this here. Okay, now that we've put the right feed in here, I'm just going to go over and check out what it looks like. So I'm going to open up the website and I know that the feeds for that one are on the side. So I'll just click a page that I know it shows up on. And sure enough, there's the RSS feed that we just added and click on it. And this time it's working properly. So you can see that it's got the name of the feed that we entered in FeedBurner, which is the name of the site by default. And it's got the recent post in here. So I'm just going to add it to Google. So I'm going to add it to my iGoogle or Google homepage. And click on that. And when you see iGoogle, look, it's listed right here. This is the brand new feed that we've subscribed to. And like I said before, iGoogle, I think, is a really fantastic tool that helps you with your workflow and your business and keeps you organized with your social media. So in another video or one of our tutorials, we've showed you how to install iGoogle and set that up and set up Buffer, which is another great tool. And I'll leave you the links below the website for that. And just so you can see, you can actually open it up and read the posts right within iGoogle. And then if you click on it here, then it will take me to the actual website. So thanks for tuning in everyone. And if you like the video that we've just shown, definitely click like below. And you can come on over to our website for more tips and tricks. And that's www.brightsparkmedia.ca. Thanks, bye.
Thank you.